We have another 11-year-old with us tonight, Johnny Winters. <laughs> Jonathan Winters has probably had uh, as much influence on other comedians as anybody I know, but nobody can be Johnny Winters. He is unique. Uh, he has a movie coming out called Moon Over Parador with Richard Dreyfuss. It's coming out in August. And he has a book out called uh, Winters Tales, Stories and Observations for the Unusual. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Would you welcome Jonathan Winters? I was certainly taken with the little girl. Yeah, isn't she nice? I really was. I, you know, at 11, of course, I was still doing this. If I give you... Oh, they were saying that. <laughs> if I give you four apples and three more, how many do you have? <laughs> Too many for my lunchbox. <laughs> At 11. Not funny. Yeah. Not funny to the teacher. No. And this kid is in college. This kid is in college. Boy, it must be. Of course, she's doing a smart thing from my standpoint. She's dating a 19-year-old. <laughs> because that guy is probably very sophisticated. Uh, and, you know, type, Hi, honey, how are you? Here's another copy of Mice and Men. <laughs> I don't were you know, any good in school? I, you... I was kidding. I was kidding. What, what were you like in school? Were you, what was I like? Were you disruptive? Oh. Were you a... No, I wasn't. I now, was, most uh, people would think you're crazy. Yeah. I know that. Well, they do today. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but years ago, I was a very normal child. Too normal, probably. I wasn't making any money. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, my parents were divorced. I won't go into a long thing in deference to... They're gone anyway, but... Oh, sorry. Uh, the thing was that... Uh, Dad was off, you know, somewhere in an open field or you know, settling insurance policies near a creek bank. And so I I just didn't know about him where he was. And yeah. it was always explained he's away. Everybody in our family was away a lot. Where's Uncle, uh, you know, Aunt Emma? She's away, dear. You never knew where. Well, well, I knew that eventually as I went by one of the institutions. Was, All right. But at any rate, uh, mom, mom did her best, yeah. and, and she tried. But I, I struggled because I, you know when people say it. So as you asked the little girl, which was interesting, she said, "What are some of your favorite subjects, and what do you excel in?" Well, when you're 11 and in college, of course you excel in everything. Yeah. Um, I just I was blown in all departments. <laughs> Math was not my best. Yeah. I really I got as far as geometry, and. Uh, I thought that was just, I mean, having been tutored in literally everything from the apples to algebra, <laughs> A square plus B square, and we sitting there. You still remember that? Oh, please. Yes. <laughs> but because I remember the students going up and finishing. <laughs> and I was always like this, you know. I, when she was, it was interesting. I really taken by her philosophy, some of those words. Um, when it was always uh, John Winter's uh, uh, problem number six. And I was... Uh, I be, but you become an actor. It's interesting. I, 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 I was calling on, you know, failures then. I mean, mind failures, uh, arthritis in both feet. Uh, so I'd say, I can't walk, sir. I can't walk to the board. Maybe if you bring the board to me. Get up. Surely, surely. But uh, I like the multiple choice stuff because you had a shot at it. You know? Where did you, you take, go to school? You can take a guess. Did you have multiple choice? Sure we had multiple. I told you, Dr. Nindler. You cheated me. We didn't get the multiple choice. God bless you. The, es the essays were the worst. The oh, blue book the, essays, the essays. I never... Oh, well, now you're talking about college with the yeah. blue book. I was in college just about an hour. <laughs> First of all, they paddled me. I wasn't used to that. I'd come out of three years in the Marines, and a guy said, assume the angle. And I said, what angle are we talking about? We're back to geometry again. <laughs> so... Uh, I grabbed the ankles. How many times? Very, you know, in those days, I was really in shape. Yeah. Had the 32 waist, and we didn't have steroids in those days. We picked each other up. If you could find an attractive man, you know, with <laughs> well built, oh yeah, without going too far, building, uh, 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 the arms automatically grow. Um, no, the guy spanked me or paddled me, and, and I had to repeat all the chapters, and apparently a lot of chapters in the deke. And that was it, huh? Well, that was it for him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just... I forgot uh, you. Of course you were in the Marines. Yeah, I just... Well, the three three years, I... 
I really, I don't know where I was. I didn't know where I was a lot because we weren't told. And uh, many's the time, you know, people say where we were. I was, I knew we were in the Pacific. You were in the Marine Corps. Yes, you were, yes. became a general. No, Colonel. Don't really? Just a Colonel. That's as good as a general. <laughs> All right. You'd be very proud of that. Thank you. Did you strafe a lot of workers in the field? <laughs> My seat just went down. Hey, hey. My seat just went down. You may be. Hey, how about this? No, no. God, I thought we were canceled. He may. I thought it was all over. The seat just went. Well, you may be dating the little girl. That's what the hell happened. Fix me. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Ray. Uh, you. Are you all right? Boy, when it's over, it's over. Boy. NBC is cruel the way they tell you. that Just the seat goes down and they move somebody in. I thought the little girl was going to run in. Hey, he's my size now. I, uh, I haven't seen you for a while. Are you, do you take a vacation? Um, what you call a vacation vacation? Go somewhere? Well, I, Johnny, I've been on so many. Uh, I, uh, I, as a matter of fact, and I'm not making this up, you know, some stuff I have to. I mean, if you return home late at night, you better have a story. Yes. Um, so, at any rate, I'm going fishing in two weeks uh, with a companion. And, uh, oh no, wonderful guy. And uh, I wanted to take a girl, but I'm married. Um, so I found this guy that, you know, uh, fingers are gone. Well, at any rate, uh, we're going up to, we're going to fly from here, LAX, to yeah. Minneapolis, and then Minneapolis to International Falls, and then to Bermidji, a little place. Yeah. That's where the river, Mississippi River. Yeah. Interesting piece of history. A little, little girl might be interested in this. Yeah. It's only about that wide. So anybody can step over the Mississippi right at Bermidji. Um, there are no fish there. You have to take dynamite to get anything. But uh, then we go into Canada and do a lot of this, you know. And, oh, jeez. <laughs> well, that sounds like fun. It, it should be. Camping, if it isn't, I'm down. Camping out and cooking and all that stuff? Well, it's, it's fun if you don't get bitten by a snake. I got bitten one year, and uh, I don't want to get into where I was bitten, but it stopped fishing right away. <laughs> But at any rate, it was, it was, it, it is, it's just fun to get outdoors. Yeah. Uh, every time John comes on, we kind of give him a little exercise here, uh, since you do so many characters, to talk about traveling. I'm going to give you a couple of names of, say, tourists from other countries who are coming over to America on vacation, and you just give me your impressions or why they came here or wherever it flows, all right? Um, British agent Leslie Sitzpuffin. Actually... It's it's Fitzpuffin. I'm sorry. Uh, it's mispronounced. It was with the when I was first a young agent, and obviously still being mispronounced. That's ter perfectly understandable and perfectly all right. I've never been in all my travels. I was in the British Army, uh, and, I, and as a youth, I wasn't with any army. I was just mainly at home in in Devon. But uh, when I when I uh, jumped out of school, I went uh, directly to Africa, and then we engaged the uh, Italians there. And, and, uh, and and the Germans too, and I was in the bloody war for some time. And then, then that time took its toll, and I went to India and raised snakes. And uh, and then uh, now, and now I want to go to America. And I, I my chief reason for going. There's yes. so many reasons. I mean, you think of 50 states. My yeah. God in heaven, that's a tremendous amount of people in a vast country. I can only think of China and Russia being. Uh, as big or Africa, America's right in there. It's just enormous, and so much going on. You know, color TV and automobiles on the highways, and pretty girls doing things. And so, I uh, I want to go and see a baseball game. I, any man that makes a couple of million pounds with a mitten in the middle of summer, uh, catching a silly white ball and hitting something with a stick, I won't see it. Yes. Well, if I don't see it, I suppose I'd go directly to the apartment and put my head in there in air conditioning. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Leslie. How about uh, Monsieur Francois Dufour? Yeah, Monsieur Dufour. Mr. Dufour. Uh, <laughs> I mispronounced your name again. No, no, it's all right. You know, it, uh, Dufour is correct. Um, you know Fou. 
in uh, in French means crazy. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, I am very aware of that. Francois de crazy. Uh, Francois de fou. Francois de crazy, you know, when it's translated into English at any rate. But I, my reason for coming to America, like the other man, I, uh, I, was, uh, I was never in a war. It was unfortunate. I couldn't go. I had a double murmur in the mind or something. <laughs> And, uh, which is mind murmuring. <laughs> and uh, the eyes roll around and you can concentrate on the artillery. <laughs> so uh, I passed on that and had just a series of affairs, de son cher. Yeah, I see. And, uh, but I'm going to America because I've always wanted to go to Hollywood. Hollywood? Oh, yes. I've been married, you know, six or seven times, oh, you know. Oh, yes. And uh, I'd like to try one more, you know, maybe go to Anaheim for a honeymoon and um, whatever, you know, I, but I've seen so many beautiful women, you know, they're not all in Paris or Bordeaux or Monaco or, uh, you know, Algiers or whatever, Italy. There are a number of them, you know, right in Hollywood, the young girls who are 25, uh, 30, 35. Right now, I would settle for a woman about 48. You know? <laughs> Good woman who just said, I know a woman down the street where I live is like that. She carries a ghetto blaster, you know. Well, it's totally nice to hear here. Now, now let's talk to a, a tourist from Germany, Hans Beldenhofer. Yes, that's exactly right. Well done. <laughs> Good thinking. Hans Beldehofer. Hans Beldehofer. Obviously, I'm German, you know? And uh, a lot of people uh, during uh, the, the engagement I was in uh, thought I was Dutch. <laughs> I started out with the Edom cheese as a child. <laughs> and uh, we captured a guy by a windmill when Father and I were visiting Amsterdam. <laughs> uh, my main reason for coming to America is to visit the cemeteries. Big pardon? Uh, uh, cemeteries. I love uh, battlefields. Oh, I see. Really, I should have said battlefields. Mm -hmm. Same thing, you know, if you die there with a cannon, yes. or you just... <laughs> whatever, you know. But I want to also see my dream. And I am originally from... Well, originally from Bavaria, you know? What? <laughs> ah. Yeah, I recognize her. <laughs> Fräulein Steckler. Well, I thought you'd raise your hand sooner or later. <laughs> Used to be in that letter code in Paraguay. Uh, it gave you away. At any rate, uh, I, I really am looking forward to, to seeing Detroit. And, Detroit? Oh, yeah. Any major city with all those incredible, marvelous people and those guys that sit down at the drawing boards and make the cars. They goofed. And uh, I want to see why Detroit made a mistake. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Other than that, you know, a couple of steins, a little beer, roasted. Yeah, oh, jeez, you hit that a good lick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hans. Uh, what a mission. Okay. You actually went to, uh, to, to, to Paraguay to make this movie? Well, no, we went to Brazil. Brazil, excuse me. Went yeah. to Brazil um, a year ago. Moon over Paraguay. Moon over Paraguay. It won't be out. I... I wish we had anything, a still. We have nothing. Uh, one of the rare times, you know, an actor sits there and starts to talk about a movie. We have nothing for you to see. Uh, you'll just have to wait like me. So yeah, Christ. Um, we went down a year ago, uh, August first, first or trip, September. First trip? Down. First trip. For, well, I've been down to Columbia. I shouldn't drop heavy names, but... Oh, good. Colombians, there are a little bit of everything here tonight. Two hands here, one lady from Germany. Incredible. Uh, went down to uh, Colombia years ago, and I've been in, uh, uh, let's see, um, well, Peru, which I really loved. I, oh, two from Peru. <laughs> <laughs> you rascal. Here's something else. Throw a light on that person. You know they're from Encino. Uh, uh, at any rate, um, I love Peru. Much, yeah. much of it. But we, in Brazil, we had a marvelous time. Uh, uh, Richard Dreyfus, who's yeah. a fantastic actor and one of the hottest properties around, uh, uh, did a great job uh, along with Raul Julia, who was, um, uh, he just uh, finished that series uh, on Onassis, where he... Yeah, he played uh, yeah. Aristotle Onassis. And yeah. he's an exciting actor, uh, along with Sammy Davis Jr., uh, a wonderful guy, and, and, and a guy that's been around since he was 
before the little 11 year old. Uh, it was a great guy and a lot of fun to be with. Did you speak I, the language at all? Did I speak the or language? Did you just make it up? Well, I can speak Spanish uh, if you put something to the head and uh, that's uh, quite long and black, then uh, chances are we'll talk about the tires and the and coche. No se le me esposa mi enfermo. Don't dice coche aquí, you know, and mondia su muerte, maracón. Whatever comes to you, you know. You got to do it. You got to throw a lot of things around very fast. Despacio, yeah. uh, you know, the guy will say, hopefully, the guy from Paraguay or from Brazil. They're Portuguese yeah. in Brazil. Yeah. Marvelous country. Uh, I took a lot of pills and they didn't work. Um, I, for food and other reasons. And I was just up all night watching Portuguese television that, and just sort of. Um, and then, of course, in my lap, I had some. Most of the times when you do go to the commode, the bathroom, whatever they want to call it, the baño. Yeah, the baño. Is it a baño? El baño. Well, I went to a baño. There was another guy in there. Banyo. Now you're talking about something else with the banyo because I saw a big pair of Adidas, you know. Um, so at any rate, uh, but I we had a great time. Paul Mazursky yeah. was the guy that directed. Was a fantastic guy, uh, really a funny, funny man. And I, it comes out August fifth, which I realize yeah, this is May. <laughs> How fast we are! Um, Look, when it comes out, come back and bring a film clip. I've got to come back before that, Johnny. I need the money. Uh, I want to tell you, Johnny, don't worry about the tanker. I'm not... I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just... I was sleeping. <laughs> the next thing, I'm a little hotter. But it's pinched in the furrow. Well, it... Lick my face and boom. True. <laughs> now I'm on cruise ship. You were not on... You were not... Oh, that's not... You were not at the helm then. No, I wasn't at the helm. I, uh... I probably should have been, you know. <laughs> But now I'm on the cruise ship, and I'm a good time being a full-time womanizer. <laughs> but, uh, good no, to see you again. Hey, good to see you. So I had no idea what you were going to do before you walked out here. I didn't either. <laughs> I saw that poor devil go in the water, and I, yeah. boy, that's, you know, and he's a big guy. He's not, uh, he's like, I am a better-looking man. I think you're a fine-looking man. Well, thank you, and you're an attractive man. <laughs> We certainly covered that. Listen, You're new in a bar. Let's don't let this slip into something sort of. <laughs> leather City, huh? <laughs> nice. Oh, Leather City. Wait till I take you home to Mother. <laughs> She's going to love you. You know, when you came out with it, I, yeah. it reminded my Navy days because normally a flag officer, you know, has That's that, right. the scramble eggs on the hat. I bought this uh, where I buy a lot of hats. Uh, an antique shop, uh, an antique show. I think it was a show uh, here in California, and it's the Cunard line. Uh -huh. And uh, I guess they're are they still operative? Oh, I'm yeah, not sure. sure. Yeah. As far as I know, I usually go down to Long Beach on a Saturday afternoon and see what's happening. You know, whether they're going in or coming out or whatever. Uh, and of course, if a guy does fall, then I grab his hat. <laughs> but uh, it, it's kind of fun. I. Uh, you were not a sailor, of course. No, no, I, I was... Army uh, man. I was, no, I was a Marine. Marine. Marine, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah, right. Semper, <laughs> Semper Fi, huh? Semper Fi, always, uh, always uh, faithful, isn't it? Always faithful? Yeah. yeah. Always ready. As... <laughs> I know Boy Semper Pe Paratus was the other. That's yeah. Coast Guard. Right? Yeah. yeah, they were right there. Well, what's the Boy Scouts? Thing. Boy Scouts? Yeah. I think Boy Scouts is, uh, is pretty much this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, and when they get older, it's still that. It's three fingers, you know, let's, let's do it. Um, were, you, were you a Boy Scout at all? No, I was oh. not a Boy Scout. I oh. wanted to be. My mother was... Uh, <clears throat> I, I went to her at that time. Uh, I was a little old, too. I, I thought I'd be a shoe in I was almost 16. Well, and, a little uh, old, yeah. Yeah, a little old, and I thought that's the reason I'd stand a better chance. So I went to her, and I said, uh, I'd like to be an, uh, an Eagle Scout. And she said, well, you just don't walk in as an eagle. You have to be a cub. You're too old to be a cub. Merit badges. All yeah, right. merit badges. And uh, I said, well, at least I'd like to be a Boy Scout. And she said, well, do you have money for a uniform? And, of course, I never had money for anything uh, except a knife uh, that I had in my boot. I had oh, a high top. So I always had that. that. And I, for many, I still carry it. You know, when I'm driving now, I'll be driving after the show. And I have a good-sized rascal, you know. <laughs> Mm, put that in, you know. So when somebody sticks their finger up in the air or something and says something unattractive or sideswipes me, I always say, hey, how you doing, man? How you doing? Good. 
A little bit of violence, you know. So you never became a Boy Scout? No, I never became a Boy Scout. Uh, I just, uh, there were so many areas that I failed in. Well, we talked a little bit about, you're from the Midwest, uh, Ohio, and I'm from the Midwest, which is considered, you know, right in the heart of the country. About this time of the year, spring, spring mm -hmm. back there. Remember girls? Oh, How'd you do with the girls when you were young? I think I remember girls in the winter, too. The winter, too? Uh, well, of course. I didn't mean that you... I was looking forward to spring. Yeah. And, uh, but no, I, well, I, I was a kid. Again, I had a lot of chores. Plus, the fact that uh, I remember Sunday school, I was, uh, I was asked constantly, stop thinking about it. Oh. And, uh... That was a sin. That, sin. Well, well, I guess it was a sin. Yeah. And uh, you said I've you... always said, you know, God is in my mind and the devil's in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... At any rate, I, I was. I was a kid. I wasn't... I, you know, I wasn't a lech. I wasn't a horny kid You're or anything like that. I was just kind of always... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Once you open the eyes, then you're considered bad news, you yeah. know. Hi, Betty Jean. <laughs> mm. no, not to do that. And they were always named somebody like That's Betty Jean. Always Betty Jean. Oh, yeah. And it was always, no, no, no. <laughs> What's this? What is this? No, no, no. No. All right, then try a smaller size. <laughs> Will you respect me tomorrow? Remember will, those? Will you respect me? You won't me respect me. One thing I, I did, I made a terrible, terrible move. I've only done this once in my life. Yeah. I, of course, I've been married so long now, all this is behind me. Uh, <laughs> boy, is it behind me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, one time in high school, I was all, uh, getting ready to go away anyway, and um, this wonderful gal, she's really a beautiful gal, her dad was a cop. I, I'd give her name out, but I'm sure he, he's still alive. <laughs> And uh, cops have a way of living longer than anybody, really. Unless, of course, you know, it's a shootout. Uh, but uh, even when he had white hair, it was, hey, you don't lay a hand on my daughter and I kill you. I kill you. And then he'd pump that rascal, you know. Well, so I never laid a hand on her. Um, however, thoughts do go through your mind uh, once you're out of town. And uh, we were going to a drive in theater. And. Um, it was about... Uh, Drive-ins, yeah. No more. Yeah, oh, but hey, listen, boy, that's... <laughs> those are fun pads, you know. Yeah. And, so I had this little fun car with a stick shift, you know. I mean, it's a stick shift that was down on the floor. Man, really yeah, yeah. yeah. Floor, yeah. And uh, they were awkward, too, of course, you know, moving those things and bending them a lot. So at any rate, I, uh, I turned to this girl, and uh, we drove. We had seen the movie, full attract, both attractions, a double header, double feature, and we pulled out... And we were about uh, oh, a mile away from the drive-in. It was Dayview Drive-in. Always remember that. And I turned to her and I said, Polly, I'd stop the car. And I said, uh, I'm crazy about you and I, I love you. And I, I know you've dated a lot of guys, which she had. <laughs> about 56 guys. And uh, she'd been through baseball teams and... Wow, uh, football, anyway, a uh, lovely girl, maintained her figure, and um, so I said to her, just give me a big kiss, typical of a kid, you know, a young boy, and I said, give me a big kiss, I really need that, if nothing else, and then I said something else, because I became excited, and I said, if you don't, get out and take a walk, and she got out. And uh, I felt sorry for her. It was quite chilly. <laughs> and uh, we were at least uh, eight miles from town, you know, take a walk. It's very crude. And I can understand where women and young girls especially uh, hate young men for saying something like that. You know, come on, I want something. Yeah. So I said, I apologize. And she cold cocked me. <laughs> Broke my jaw in four places. Polly. Oh, boy. Was like, I went home like this. <laughs> You yeah. never forget. Strong woman. Yes. The thing about uh, growing up in the Midwest, did you have a relatively happy childhood? I, I had think. an unusual childhood. <laughs> it was always, are you here again? <laughs> what is it? What is it now? Oh, I just came in for some love. <laughs> All right, we're going to love. <laughs> Sorry I brought that up. Yeah. <laughs> 
kiss a little affection, huh? But I must say, I, I was an only child, and I, I, I'm getting very close now to where I, I'm, I'm almost stopping complaining about my childhood entirely, which is very tough. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the thing is, it's true. I mean, you know, if you're making a good living and you got a family and a wife and a house, it's very close to being paid for. <laughs> uh, just about like things aren't so uh, bad. Then. Not things aren't so bad. And I got a yeah. car, you know, and, and a wild beast in the yard. We don't know what it is, but it's. <laughs> Where did you? It's what passed part? away, and we've been on a track. You know, yeah. got, it, it, it's dead. But it, <laughs> I'll, what we have done, we, we took a taxidermist, did something a little bizarre. No animal lovers, and I love animals. I won't lay that. I in know there. that. Love animals. <laughs> but when, when uh, 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 Scrubbles, uh, not Scrabbles, Scrubbles, I don't know. Yeah, a neighbor uh, named it. He's an alcoholic. But uh, <laughs> and he's, Scrabbles, Scrabbles. So, we took a uh, bicycle. Uh, the the uh, reflectors and put that in the animal's eyes. <laughs> Boy, when you see that rascal coming down the path, ooh, ooh, ooh. this is attention getting. Yeah, it's an attention. Well, getter. you must have picked up your bizarre sense of humor from somewhere in your family. Mm. You, your mother, father, or grandfather? I My mean, mother had a great sense of humor. Yeah, she mine was too. Very, very funny lady. Yeah, and uh, very, very tough. Uh, yeah. Very. She was in show business. She was on a small radio station. But funny. But funny. Yeah. It's funny. She said something to me which uh, has uh, carried through my life, and it's a little something I'd like to pass along to you. Perhaps if you're, you know, just drop Reader's Digest there in the Pullman car number 38. Um, my mother turned to me one time, and she said, uh, I, maybe I've mentioned this on the air before, and if I have, why, raise your hands. Uh, <laughs> but she said, would you like to be an intellectual? And I always wanted to be because I was very slow. I was labeled dumb in number of classes. So coming out of the war and everything, I thought, geez, it would be fun to be an intellectual, you know, at least to take a crack at it. And she said, always read the end of every book. Forget about the beginning. Forget about the middle. Read the end. And remember to move constantly among the hors d'oeuvres and a little patter that's going on at a cocktail party so that somebody come up, oh, uh, hi, uh, John, did you read, um, did you read the, uh, the, uh, the lavender uh, beaver? Uh, wasn't that an interesting thing with a man that escaped to Minsk? And, uh, uh, oh yes, I did read that fascinating book. And, of course, the star, he was stabbed 16 times in the forehead and then fell forward on the, a used paper. I think it was New York Times. And, uh, fascinating, excuse me, I want to get some more dirt. And, uh, just throw in the last finish of the book and move on. And move on. Yeah. So, she helped me with that. My grandfather was guy, kind of guy. He was funny. Yeah. Uh, he, uh... He'd been a banker, and he said, bankers are not funny. They're wealthy, mm -hmm. but they have, have no sh sense of humor. Uh, and he said, tellers, uh, you know, are like this, and, uh, and they're really like that, of course, if somebody does this. Uh, but uh, he, he was funny, and he said, um, he said just think, and, and he, he, he loved show business. Yeah. He never got into it, but he said, the great thing about show business is, you can be anybody you want to be. I mean, of course, that's not true. We know that, John. Uh, there are a lot of things I want to be. And the thing is, it's important to know where you're playing. All the world is not a stage. Might have been when Willie was alive, you know. Uh, but if you start playing out here about three blocks away, past uh, Hadneys or Chadneys, wherever it is, and directing traffic, and all, hey, okay, Bob, all right. Uh, there's a flying saucer coming in. Mr. Winters. <laughs> You used to do those kind of things, didn't oh, you? Oh, yes. All the world was a stage. All the world was a stage. Also, all the men were in heavy white with a red cross on their arms. And, uh, and they came and said, don't do that no more. God, it just seemed months after. How are we doing today? What do you mean, how are we doing? I want to get out of here, man. Well, you will when you get well. I'm well now. Can't you tell I'm well? I feel great. <laughs> I was very close to getting part of Sean Connery in the Hunt for Red November or October. Who cares? I didn't get part. Why plug picture? Yeah. I am happy to be here. My yes. form of my government and everything, they're disappearing anyway. <laughs> Things are uh, changing very rapidly Alexo in your country. Alexo Moronoso. A big one? Uh, hmm? 
Alexov Morinosov. Ah, ah. Was yes. that a soft hand? Oh, thank you very much. No, not good for you. <laughs> Let me feel your hand again. Mmm. <laughs> when you lift heavy chest of money, good for your hand. <laughs> no, I was up for picture. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I love Connery. Yes. Good man, you know. Men who come, you know, out from nowhere with Scotch accent. And then pick up on Russian and doom, 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 doom. Exciting. You would like to have that part, huh? I wanted it. Yes. <laughs> I have no money for medication. <laughs> you are... Johnny, you're are deep. You? Good to see you again. You're... Well, now, what brought this on tonight? Huh? I never know what you're going to do when you walk out there. I didn't know either, and... Consequently, it, you know, this coat. Yes. I bought this coat uh, in an antique shop. I'm not going to give the guy credit because uh, he didn't give me the coat. Yeah. Uh, this looks like something somebody would have worn in the world. This was, war. yeah, I... <laughs> this was worn by a submarine commander. Really? Not on our side. Yeah. And uh, it, when you feel the thing and when you wear it and hold it, and I'll give it to you in a few minutes. Yes. Perhaps after the show. Yes. To wear, uh, <laughs> it's quite heavy. So I'm sure he couldn't lift it. You know, the periscope, and probably if they did have problems with the submarine, he couldn't get off because this would the coat alone. sink with the coat. They say uh, tor torpedoes los, wasn't that it? Uh, uh... Yeah, yeah. Oh. Das Verschießen los von Stegger, how heißen wir Helden, der? Dein Wunderwerk aus den Engländer. Oh, Schelling, brings back old memories. There's one. Hans, look, look, I wouldn't say again. Look, look. <laughs> All right, take it then. <laughs> dive, dive, dive. Dive, mm -hmm. dive. Then they went down, you know, as far as they could. Yeah. And then they wait. In all submarine... They always have that scene, always they? wait for the guys on the rock. Yeah. Of course, it's a paper mache rock, but... And then you hear, and then you hear that little... Yeah. Bonk, 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 bonk. You know, yeah. the, the, that's right. Ding, ding, ding. And to then, me, it's more, then, of a, then to me it's more of a... Bonk, bonk, bonk. <laughs> no, it's more of a... <clears throat> Oh, oh. You know, the and pictures then... I saw was it. I think he's right. Of course you do. You work here. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. He knows what side of the buttered up. Of course he does. Do we have to cut away already? We'll come back and talk Maybe to the commander. Charge. Yes. <laughs> I always thought it was more of a. When you, when you, uh, in pictures, what do you like to play best? You've, you've done some successful oh, I, movies. I would. I really, I guess it's in all of us, you know, we're all a little disturbed, I hope. Um, I would like to play a serious role, and I think I'm... Are you talking like by... Hamlet, you mean? Oh, please. Not oh, Shakespeare. Oh, no, no. No, because uh, I, 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 I shouldn't say this, but I will. Um, I couldn't memorize that stuff. You yeah. see, uh, I can't get it together. When a guy says simple things, you know, they tell you, does that not see? And yet a moment's silence cast upon this moat unbeknownst to this man. Well, what it means is, the guy can't see the castle. <laughs> hey, I don't know what they're doing. What I can't get it together. this night to be? Yeah, I know what you're saying. So, you mean Shakespeare, serious role of, Shakespeare's uh, out. I would, I'd like to play a heavy, you know, where, where the guy uh, kills another guy or um, <laughs> tries to or, or... Would you be good at that? I mean, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so. Just getting rid of all those urges oh, over the years? sure. Yeah. Just playing with the gun, you know. Yeah. Just, just... They make them good over there. <laughs> well, there he comes now. You know, plenty of time for a cigarette. <laughs> hey, this is the real stuff. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, there he is. Hmm. <laughs> Gotta do it this time. <laughs> what did the instruction say about it? <laughs> Hell of a kick to that rap. <laughs> we'll be good with that. Yeah. Oh. Uh. What did you do? Did you have any crazy odd jobs when you were back in Ohio that you did before you, before you got into... Uh... That man, release him. Release yes, him. that's right. Uh, 
Why, uh, well, yeah, what I... Do you think, I don't know, sell shoes? Well, um, no, I didn't sell shoes. I, uh, I put them in boxes. They, they didn't trust me to put them on the person's foot. Uh, they just, the man said he had a very thin mustache, well, which you, is always, you know, you wonder about those you guys. You're a clerk, you mean, you're a... Oh, clerk. All I did was stack them. That's it. And, uh, bring them out. The guy did this, and, of course, those days you had to go for the fingers. Uh, hey, hey, bring them out, Winters. Yes, sir. You said a 12C? No, no, no. Eight and a half C. Looks like a 12. <laughs> now, he not only loses the sale, yeah. the guy's teed off. Yeah. I don't wear that, you dummy. So, uh, I bring out snowshoes, you know, things like that. <laughs> bring out a ruler. Try this. <laughs> hey, this is on the store. Um, so you tried clerking for a while? I never worked too long at any one job. Um, <laughs> I was a gasoline attendant. Oh, don't applaud. That's very sad. Yeah. Um, Just didn't I, care for it? I, well, it wasn't a question of caring for it. I always worked for the wrong guy. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people can identify with that. I, uh, I remember when I was just a kid, I was in a marketplace, and everybody was from uh, a foreign country. Everybody. Except there was one guy locally, and of course he didn't fit in, uh, so he was asked to keep his stall outside the main market. Um, but any, if I touched it, if I, I remember there was a, a big, huge man and, and his, his wife was just as large. And I said, Mr. Bonazzo, could I, could I touch the orange? You not touch the orange. <laughs> you touch the orange, I take your head and turn it around. <laughs> and, uh, not a nice foolishly I said, did you do that in the old country? <laughs> And he did it in the old country. Uh, but uh, So that didn't last long either. Huh? We all have different reasons for coming to America. But um, <laughs> a freedom to turn a guy's head around, you know. Did you uh, ever check into your genealogy? Did that ever intrigue you? Please. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, you're looking your, back at your parents. Oh, looking and, back at my... Uh, yeah, your ancestors. My heraldry. Um, yes. Well, uh, on my mother's side, they were, um, as far as I know... Uh, they were Scotch-Irish, and yeah. this is the reason for uh, almost instant alcoholism. Uh, but, uh, on my, uh, on my, I, I was fooled, because yeah. my mother handled it very well until yeah. the end, and then she just crawled into an open area and lay down, you know. Uh, it was a typical spring day, bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs> I Consequently, the term a dirt nap. You know. I didn't mean to bring up unpleasant things here. Oh, please. no, not a, a wonderful way to go. I'm going to give you two jobs. Uh, there are a lot of things. We, all of us did, you know, a lot of jobs. And, yeah. of course, hey, it's toward the end. I may be going back to night work. Um, you know, sorting out shovels for those in the cemeteries or whatever. Um, I remember I, when I came out of the war, my mother said, not only finish high school. And, of course, hey, I had to quit high school because... Well, I wanted to quit high school, and I was failing geometry, and um, also the girl that I was in love with, um, well, it turned out, was dating the football team. And um, so Not just the quarterback just, you're talking that, about. That threw me out. Yeah. You know, I wanted to get away. And so, um, at any rate, I came home, and my mother said, you've got to get a job right away. And I said, gosh, it's a town now, 68,000 people, and almost everybody uh, has a job or is going to get one. And I said... What could I do? So I went to, of all places, I went to Coca-Cola Bodley. Hey, and nice. I, I pictured myself on the truck or as a helper. Sure. The guy said, you, and now we're off to this, and why I didn't last long, you, come here. And I said, yes, sir. I'd been hearing this for three years in the Marines, you know. I didn't need another one. Hey, you, come here. <laughs> and incidentally, I was in shape. None of this gut stuff, man. My shoulders were much bigger. I didn't have steroids. I was just taking natural distilled water. <laughs> Mm, couldn't wait to strangle the dude, you know? <laughs> so, uh, little did he know, inside is volcanic tissues, you know? <laughs> so, at uh, any rate, calming myself down now. <laughs> and, and he said, hey, you, come here. Yeah, that's right. He said, you. <laughs> yeah. You're to be a bottle washer. I said, how degrading for a corporal. <laughs> I, and I, I made the mistake. The man was, you know, first lieutenant. And, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, in a warehouse. So... He said, uh, Corporal. <laughs> well, I hit him with an empty bottle. He laughed at me. You, you, laughed at me. you see, that could have so been your problem. Then I, of course it was. <laughs> but 
He'd had a bad fall off one of the trucks, and uh, he came to me, and of course he was limping, and he said, uh, I'd like to see the, you know, turn this thing around for you, Winters, and make you an inspector. I said, oh, kind of lit up, you know, when you hear that word, important inspector. Wow. Now I had the little thing, Coca-Cola, and my name here, Ooh. Winters, misspelled, but that's okay. <laughs> I said, okay, and they put the stool down for me, big neon sign, looking for dead mice and marbles. <laughs> and you go, boy, this is what you get. You get palsy of the head at 22 years of age. You're an inspector, huh? Good to see oh, you again. You, somebody said you were in England and you performed for... I, I performed mentioned, for... I mentioned uh, them in the monologue. Princess Di and Charles. Charles, Are they, are they yeah, all, Charles, along all right? They look uh, very well. They look happy, yeah. really. We're, we're like this. <laughs> You know, you see big ears on someone like that down the south, they usually have a banjo, you know? <laughs> I guess I'm not going back to England. How gutsy were you? Now, would you dare no, I... do that joke? No, would I do that there? While he's sitting and there. And then end up in the Tower of London with a large man named Bubba. <laughs> Hello, you're my friend now. Yeah. Wow, wow. There's you English. Look at the band. How are you doing? Thank the voice in the band. Uh, thank a lovely evening. Uh, it's great to be out. It's Christmas. I think are you just, do you get uh, happy Christmas depressed? Get, a lot yeah. of people get stressed out. No, really? Driving yeah. isn't bad. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> yeah! I told you I saw it first! Great to walk into a store and see little Jewish ladies like ninjas with their purses like... I saw that back, you <laughs> well, Little candy cane for the hypoglycemic children. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Oh, God. Oh. There's some wonderful stuff, huh? <laughs> There's some exciting Christmas gifts. Uh, they have the Jessica Hahn doll. It, oh. doesn't do, it doesn't do anything. It just falls over and goes, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. I guess Jim and Tammy live near you in Malibu. Jim and Tammy rented a house out in Malibu. Jim and Tammy, I love Jim. group, yeah. Her eyelashes have been declared a national forest. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Do you believe? <laughs> Send money. And he has Mike Douglas's old hair. And <laughs> it's amazing. All the money they make, though. People in the Vatican are going. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Shh, I'm Louis. <laughs> That's like shoe money for us. <laughs> Well, you think there's a Polish pope with two names, and people in the Deep South are going, Hey, why can't we have a pope from Tennessee, then? <laughs> His name's Pope John Paul. We'll have a pope named Pope Joe John James. <laughs> there it is. Now, if you hear that, you have a guy named Newton next to him saying, Cardinal Bubba. <laughs> How are you doing? You know, instead of wine and wafers, we're going to have Jack Daniels and beer nuts. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know it. Yes, indeed. Are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? Are you sorry we drifted apart? Does your memory stray to a bright summer day when I kissed you and called you Sweetheart, do the chairs in your parlor seem empty and bare? Do you gaze at your doorstep and picture me there? Is your heart filled with pain? Shall I call? Tell me, dear, are you lonesome tonight? You know, I wonder if you're lonesome tonight. I wonder a lot of things. Like, are you human? How do you live with yourself? Are you a reptile with a nice hairdo? You stinky trap! You lied to me! 
But you told me you love me, you never love me! You said forever, remember that one? Oh, there's a joke, forever! <laughs> yeah, forever, honey! Yeah, what does forever mean to you? So another guy comes in your life with more money and a better car. Oh, I'm sorry, we better break up. I'm not growing as a person. We need to get away from each other. Oh, that was a great idea. Yeah, let's break up, honey. Get you growing, eh? Huh? Are you in a car? I'll tell you what you learned. You learned how to break my heart. Uh, but I'd rather go on hearing your lies than to go on living without you. That's how sick I am. Well, I'm standing here. The stage is bare. Oh, I can't, I can't say it. You know what you did. You know what you did. You were wrong. Say it, you stupid, stubborn pig. I was wrong. Oh, oh. Is your heart filled with pain? Shall I come back again? Tell me, dear. Are you lonesome tonight? I hope you die. That really brings a tear to your eyes. Does that take you back? That's what, that's what love is all about. You know, you know, the funny thing is, you know there's like seven <laughs> girls out there right now that think I'm talking directly to them. <laughs> I know it's me. I know he's singing that to me. <laughs> Sam, you are deeply disturbed. You know that. <laughs> you know, when somebody brought me that tape, I'll be honest with you, I sat there and it started off. It sounded like a young Presley. And then all of a sudden you went into this uh, thing in the middle and I fell off the couch again. <laughs> You have a really good voice. I'm not joking. Well, I, uh... Where'd you learn? Where'd you I, used to, I used to sing in church. Hard no, to believe as it oh, is. Yeah. <laughs> that was back there before the big satellite boom. That, uh, <laughs> and uh, my, my parents used to make me sing, but uh, we were goofing around. You learn singing. in church? Yeah. Yeah, I used to, I used to be a preacher. I heard that. <laughs> no. No. What, yeah, what, were you, what were you before that? President of your own country, Sam? <laughs> yeah. what, what kind of preaching? Were you a, a fundamentalist, was, uh, Baptist, or a holy roller type of stuff, or what? Yeah, Pentecostal. Yeah. I guess holy roller. Uh, you know, we were like we're like Baptists, except we could get out of our seats and roll around the floor. And stuff. <laughs> what? So I guess yeah, holy rollers are pretty close. If you were doing, um, if you were doing some preaching, and this was our, this was your congregation. Yeah. What would you? Oh, it was very fire. It was very, uh, I don't know about you, but when I woke up this morning, somebody told me, you don't have to lose. You don't have to be defeated. You can change your life. You know, Zach, I'm <laughs> and, uh, you know, You're here. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, guys would, guys would see and stuff just from the excitement. I think I see something's going on here. You know, just, it is almost uh, hypnosis, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Why'd you give that up? I mean, uh... Well... <laughs> You, I got a divorce so, when I was, uh, oh. I got married when I was 21 to a, a lovely girl that I'm sure is watching and thinks she's one of the seven. And, uh, That's pretty young to get married. Yeah, yeah, it was a dumb move. Yeah, and, uh, that, just didn't work out? No, no, I know, I know it's strange preaching? things to you, but it didn't yeah, work out. Yeah, I know, out. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm sitting with Yoda. Yoda, Yoda. <laughs> You will learn, great Sam, you will learn. Um, 21 is pretty young to get married. Was she young? Yeah, she was young. She was 19. Yeah, not show business, are No, no, man. <laughs> uh, it's you're very hard to say some of the things you'd like to say, well, Johnny. Well, you know, within, within reason. Within reason, yeah. She, but uh, I was 23, and uh, yeah. I've been ministering for about five years, and it wasn't a good thing to have your spiritual resume. You yeah. Know, the marriage hadn't worked out, and I got disillusioned. And I said, "Hey, it's time to go into comedy." And see yeah. If I could, uh... Did you? Uh... <laughs> yeah, nice. And... <laughs> so people expect me to say, "I woke up one day and went, hey, forget the Bible. Where's the party?" <laughs> You know. Did you? Did you try it again? Did you try marriage again? Oh, so you were going to ask that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. So you're married now? No, I, I just oh, got divorced. Uh, <laughs> I just got divorced. Though. We, we, we actually separated in 82. Uh -huh. And we just now got around to getting a divorce. What? And she hired, uh, she hired Marvin Mitchelson. Oh. I'm a bigger fan of your work now, man. You're the best. <laughs> Deadly. Uh, you never had to go up against him, did you? Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, you would have remembered. I would have thank you. You so. would have remembered. Uh, 
<laughs> you don't want to rattle his chain too much. But those are those are painful things to go through. Oh, seven years, man. Painful things. Seven years. It's like, it's like I know, I know she didn't know I was going to make it. It wasn't that. Yeah. It was like, yeah, I'm just going to hold out till you're on the cover of Rolling Stone, and then I'll file. <laughs> I was like, how did she hold on for seven years? Luckily, but, there's no bitterness, though, huh? <laughs> well, I gotta say, the best thing, the best thing about being married is that it keeps you from getting married. Huh? Well, that's true. That's the best thing. So you're gonna wait a while until you try this again? Thought the band would like that, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna wait a while. I'm, I'm living with two sisters now. Oh, uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So, uh, so career-wise, things are going good, huh? Um, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been an interesting year. Uh, you're, an, you're an interesting guy. Now, that stuff I saw on the tape was so hysterical. But it's tough to do some of it. It's very, it's adult stuff. But it's difficult to transfer that to, to commercial well, TV, isn't it? Yeah, and I've seen a lot of people trying to, you know, a lot of the comics lately trying to be even more and more vulgar and profane. So I thought, why not in the middle of all this, turn around, try to do some family entertainment like I just did. You know, well, let's just uh, sing yeah. the whole family. <laughs> That's right. Very 